All right, and so hello everyone. Welcome to Code Generation from OpenAPI uh, Schema to PowerShell Module in Forest Steps. Um, glad you're here, we're excited to be here. Uh, my name is Daniele. I'm a software engineer at Peer Storage. Uh, hopefully you guys have heard of us, uh, have talked to the smart people outside in the booth, uh, have seen some interesting demos. For those of you ha who have not heard of us before, uh, putting very simple terms, we work with data storage solutions, uh, Started with uh, flash uh, storage or flash storage, but we have a growing portfolio, so make sure to check our booth and see all the cool things we're working with. Um, and I'm here with my also co-worker, uh, Jen Hao. Hello, everyone. My name is Jen Hao and uh, from Pure Storage. Uh, so both Daniel Ye and I are our software engineer, and we are from the integration team. So uh, our team works on multiple uh, PowerShell projects, and one of it is uh, Pure Storage PowerShell SDK, uh, Pure Storage PowerShell SDK, and uh, uh, this SDK serves for the Pure Storage uh, Flash Array. And today we will uh, bring you some secret sauce of how we cook the uh, Pure Storage PowerShell SDK uh, using the code generation. So less effort, and the code will write the code. And here we have some contact info in case you guys have some questions later or want to think on how we did uh, this stuff. Okay, oh, sorry. And so quickly to our agenda today, uh, we're just gonna uh, briefly show our real case scenario, which is the PowerShell uh, SDK2 that Jen Hao mentioned. Uh, so what we achieved there. Uh, briefly talk about the technologies we used, uh, and then we introduce a simpler uh, example, which is the pet store example. Uh, that will make it easier to look into the demos. Uh, and then we just go through the uh, two approaches that we have uh, tried, the one with mustache and the one with Zero2, uh, so you guys can see how which one is better for your case. All right, so first, um, simple introduction about the PowerShell um, SDK2. And uh, so hopefully this will work better now. Uh, for those of you who have never seen a Flash Array, that's how the web UI look like. Uh, I have some uh, interesting information about the array, the status, latency, bandwidth, a lot of cool stuff. Uh, and if you go here to the menu, you have a few options. If you go to storage, uh, and you can see your volumes, um, create new volumes, assign them to hosts, take snapshots. You can see a list of snapshots here. Uh, so a lot of cool stuff uh, that you can see. Uh, and then if you're trying to do like a one-time operation, maybe you just want to create a volume to try something, or you just want to see the status of uh, your volumes, uh, you can just do that through the web UI. But if you want to incorporate that on into your workflow, uh, maybe your daily backups and something like that. You probably want something that you can script on. Uh, so if you go here on your help, uh, you have a few ways that you can interact with the Flash Array. You have your CLI, and you have a couple of um, REST API versions. So we mostly work with the REST API version 2 here. Uh, if you click on that link, you're basically going to come to this page where you have the help. Uh, and then you see like a bunch of different operations that you can do uh, through the REST API. For example, you can go to the volumes here. Um, and then you can list your volumes. Uh, you have all the examples of how the all the parameters that you have to use, the example of the response. So everything is there. And for some of our customers, that will be enough, and that's what they're going to use to integrate with their scripts. Um, on the top here, you have the Open API specification for the REST API, so you can download that, and you take a, can take a look of how it looks like. Um, so, for example, if I look at my outline here, um, who has uh, worked with uh, Open API specification before and knows how it looks like? Cool, few people. Um, so yeah, so you have your tags, so all the endpoints there that uh, you can interact with. Um, if you close your tags, uh, you can see your paths. So you have a description of um, your methods, the parameters you're gonna use, uh, the expected response. So basically all the information about your, your REST API is there. So cool. Um, so once you have that, uh, as I mentioned, most of our customers, uh, a lot of customers can be happy with just that. But some of our customers don't want to be worrying about how to do a REST call and how to handle all the standards and all that. So we try to uh, provide some uh, tools for them to be able to, to interact with the Flash Array easier. So we have some SDKs for different languages. Uh, and we created a PowerShell module to uh, let PowerShell users uh, interact with the Flash Array easier. Uh, so our PowerShell module uh, looks more or less like this. Um, oops, let me do like that. Yeah, it's kind of frozen. Cool. Oh, there it is. 
Uh, so uh, is the pure storage partial SDK2. Uh, that's actually a real uh, module that we publish. Uh, you can download it from the partial gallery. If you have a flash array, you can play with it. You should be playing with it if you have a flash array. Um, and then if you get the commands, you see that there's a lot of commandlets. It's basically all the operations that you can do with the REST call. They are here. Um, and then you can do a get help. Uh, we, for example, let's do update volume. And you can do a full. And that will give you like all the parameters that you, ca that you have to pass. It has a description on top. So I think that the user needs to know uh, to use this uh, SDK. And so, yeah, basically that's what we did, and we're going to show you today how we did that. Um, all right. So what was the goal? We have an open API specification a schema that was provided by our uh, peer team that creates the REST APIs. Uh, and we want to have a partial module at the end that has a REST client for the REST API. So we have to create a process in the middle that makes this come true. Uh, so first, what we thought, we could do a manual approach, of course. We know how to write partial scripts. Uh, we know how to make uh, REST calls. Uh, but as you saw, there's a lot of commandlets. Uh, we had uh, over 150 uh, paths on the uh, open API specification. And we kind of have uh, kind of often uh, releases. Just as here, we had seven different releases for this uh, REST API. So it could be done, but it would probably be very hard for our team to keep this up to date for all the different releases. If everything gets added, we, probably, we might have forgotten uh, a parameter or another. So it will be pretty hard to keep that up to date and working. So as you can guess from the title of the presentation, we decided to go with code generation. That will make the process faster and more reliable and all that. And so just I'm going to briefly talk about the technology that we use, just so you have an idea when I'm uh, mentioning that on the demos. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, first one, you already saw the file, the OpenAPI specification. It's the file that basically describes all your REST uh, operations. Uh, it's a language agnostic interface. It lets you specify parameters, uh, the methods, uh, requirements, and all that. So you can look more about, uh, on their uh, website. Um, next thing we use is the Swagger Code Gen. That's an open source project. You can check their GitHub page here. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, it lets you generate uh, REST clients for multiple languages. I uh, just pure few put a few here, that the ones that are um, work for us. Uh, so the, we can generate the PowerShell ones, the C-sharp, but they have a very big list, so definitely check them out. Uh, that's not pure storage code, it's uh, the Swagger guys. It's a very cool uh, tool. Um, next thing is mustache templates. Uh, this is actually used by the Swagger code gen. Uh, it's a template that uses, uh, it's a logic class template. Uh, it, used, it works basically by expanding tags. So it has some limitation because you cannot do, for example, a if a statement or a for loop inside of the template, but uh, you can go through some hoops and do that with tags. Uh, and last, uh, Stinja2, which is a more powerful templating engine, that one actually lets you do like all this logic stuff, do the ifs and for loops, and uh, gives you more uh, flexibility uh, on how you handle your templates. Okay, so our sample example, uh, the pet store. Um, pet store is actually, uh, Example from the Swagger uh, team as well. I can go to the website, pet store uh, Swagger.io. It has a similar page as you saw for the documentation of the pure storage uh, REST client. Uh, it has all the operations you can do. It's basically a simple pet store. So you have your pet operations. You can add a pet, data pet, uh, and you can go to your store and then you can place an order. So all the uh, stuff. Uh, it's a much simpler uh, REST call. It only has like, a, I don't know, like 15 uh, commands or something like that. Uh, and you don't have to be uh, handling uh, authentication like you have with the flash array. So we, it's simpler for the demo. Uh, and on the top here, they also have the um, open API specification. So all the information that you, you want to know. Okay. Uh, so that. Uh, so let's go to the code gen part using mustache. And so again, initial plan, we had the YAML file. Uh, we want to use this wire code gen and we want to have a PowerShell module. Um, so actually, you can go to their GitHub page. Uh, it has all the instructions on how to do it. You have, can download the Swagger code gen. So all the cool stuff is there, well documented. Um, let me reduce this. So all you need to do, um, basically two things that you have to have to generate a, a REST client from zero. You have to download their uh, Swagger code gen uh, tool. I have previously downloaded it here. Uh, but you can download it from there. Uh, it has instructions on the GitHub page. Uh, and you need your uh, Swagger. Um, yeah, I'm also your open API specification. So I'm just going to uh, download this guy. <laughs> Oops. So got the guy here. 
Again, same similar uh, style of file that we already saw. And that's all you need. And you can just go around their uh, slider code gen. Uh, you pass the generate option. Uh, you're trying to generate the module. Um, you pass your input file, your YAML. Uh, the language, in your case, PowerShell. And your output file, uh, your output uh, location. And if you run that, oop, wrong case. See? If you run that, if it runs. I run the same thing again, sorry. There you go. Now, if you run that, uh, it actually will generate all the PS1 files. So if you create a folder here, pet store PowerShell. Uh, and if you go into the source here, let me just minimize this guy. Uh, and you can see all your PS1 files, the, the, the operations. Um, and you see your PS1 file here. Uh, so for your module. So cool, you have a module, right? Uh, pretty simple. Uh, actually, if you try to uh, import this module, uh, this will fail. Oops, sorry. And you see that it's complaining because it cannot find some uh, types here that it's looking for. And so on our PSM1 file, it's looking uh, to create these objects for this type, but it actually there's no definition of this type anywhere. Um, the reason for that is that uh, the code that it generated by the Sawyer code gen for PowerShell, uh, it actually depends on the C Sharp library. Uh, but lucky for us, Sawyer code gen can also generate a C Sharp library. Uh, that's why they have this dependency. So basically, what you have to do is you run uh, the Sawyer code gen with the C Sharp option. You're going to get the library from C Sharp. You run with the PowerShell option. You're going to get your PowerShell files. And then you run a build file to basically uh, combine the two of them and make your module. So let's give that a try. Um, so generate the C Sharp, same thing. Just same options, but now on your language, you're going to pass C Sharp. Pretty straightforward. Uh, go. And that will generate the C Sharp folder here. Go into the source. Um, you can actually see the C Sharp code. And you can go to the client here. And you can see that here is actually where it creates the REST client uh, and do actually the core operations for uh, doing the REST calls. So cool stuff. Um, let me minimize this. Uh, and now what you have to do to combine the two of them is run this uh, build file. It was actually generated when you try to uh, generate the PowerShell module. Uh, so it's this guy here. And this guy uh, has a lot of, does a lot of stuff. But one of the things that it does is uh, it looks for the C Sharp library. Uh, where is it? Da -da -da. Um, here? No. Here. There you go. I tried to look for the DLLs uh, for the C-sharp library and everything. Uh, so let's run this guy as well. Take a little bit. There you go. It's running. This will actually build the, the C-sharp library. We generate this uh, build, build bin folder here uh, that has the DLL for uh, C-sharp. Uh, and it actually also generates this PSD1 file for your module. Um, this will uh, have the required assemblies. OK, I need the, the C Sharp uh, library. And it has the exported modules, the export uh, command list, sorry. So yeah, that's pretty much all you need, depending on your use case. Uh, you can, this is a fully functional uh, module. You can go to this location and import it. And then you can actually go and uh, get the commandlet for this guy. Uh, so those are the commandlets that were generated. So yeah, this might work for you, uh, depending on your user case. Uh, if you just want to have like a simple uh, REST uh, client module, uh, so you can do some things on your own code. Uh, this fully works. It does all the REST calls. Um, it's amazing that you can do that just with a couple of commands. Uh, you just have to download their code gen. Uh, for our case, we want to make our customers' life um, as easy as possible. So we want them to have the best experience. Uh, if you look at the syntax here, uh, it's doing like invoke uh, dash whatever the, the class name was uh, and the operation. If you have in your mind that you're actually using a REST uh, client, that makes sense. You do, you're invoking a REST call. Uh, but for our customers, we're basically just providing a tool to interact with Flash Array. So if it, they are a, a common uh, PowerShell user, they'll probably expect something like uh, if you're doing a delete path, 
you might want to expect a remove pet store pet instead. Have the, uh, the recognized verbs from PowerShell, uh, something simpler. If you're creating a pet, you probably expect like a new pet store pet. Um, so this syntax is not that user friendly for a PowerShell user. Um, moreover, if you go, for example, uh, let's take a look at one of the uh, calls, for example, the place order. So basically placing an order for a pet. And if we do get help for this guy, and full. What you get is this. Uh, you basically get the name of your commandlet syntax, one parameter that's called body of type order, but it doesn't really tell you how to get this object order. Uh, it doesn't have examples, so not the best uh, experience, right? And so if you look a little bit into the uh, module, you actually find out that to place order, you have to go and create this order object using the new order, and then you invoke your commandlet. Uh, using that, and that would actually work and give you the, whoops, actually place your order, say here, status approved and everything. Um, so this works, but it's not as easy to use. And in our case, it was a little bit worse because some of our objects, uh, there are complex objects that had complex objects inside of them, so it creates this cascading event that for the user to do one call, they had to do like create five objects and then do the call, and not the best experience. Um, so we're like, okay, how can we do this better? So we went back, okay, let's see what the cogen people do, uh, say that we can do. Uh, they were the one who created everything. Uh, so you look, uh, they actually say, okay, you don't like our syntax? No problem, you can go and change your templates. Uh, so you can go uh, on their repo, they actually have the templates uh, from your stash, and you can download them and edit them. Um, so we did that. That's why I had this mustache folder here. These are the templates that they use. If you go, for example, to API Mustache, it has uh, the definition of how they're creating this um, commandlets. So it has here function, invoke, uh, dash class name, dash operation ID. That's why everything looks like invoke, pet store API, something. Um, so if we want to change that, uh, we can do, for example, I don't want it to be the class name, I just want to be a simple PS for like pet store or partial, whatever you choose. Um, so you can do that. Uh, oops. If you save this guy, and now you can just run, um, let me just restart the session because if not, it's gonna complain about my DLL. Um, so now if you want to uh, regenerate your PowerShell uh, scripts using that template, pretty simple, same thing, uh, same command that we have been using, pass the language PowerShell. But now at the end, you're gonna pass uh, dash T for the template and you pass the path for the, for the templates folder. So let's try to run this guy. That will generate the C -sharp, uh, the PowerShell files again. Uh, and now that you have the new PowerShell files, you have to also uh, rebuild your module, so that works. So let's do the rebuild. Mm -hmm, that'll work. Um, and then you can go and import and get the modules again. And that, you, that will give you your new uh, commandlet. So now everything is dash ps instead of uh, the dash uh, pet API or whatever. Uh, so there's a few things that you can do with the mustache. Um, but for example, to do the thing that I mentioned, uh, instead of invoke something delete, do remove dash something. Uh, you could do it, but it's a little hard. You have to go through a lot of loops uh, with the tags uh, to be able to do that. So we thought, okay, if we're gonna have to be changing the template so much, maybe we might as well go to something more powerful that let us have more flexibility. And so with that, I'll give back to Jen Hao to talk about Jinja2. Thanks, Danieli. So uh, in this section, we are uh, going to talk about how we use the Jinja2 um, to render our templates and do the code generation. So wondering how many of you here uh, have ever used the Jinja2 before? That's a lot of people. Okay. But for those who are not familiar, no worries. I will walk you through how we uh, uh, use the Jinja2 in the demo site. Okay. So let's uh, take a look at the uh, overall workflow of how we uh, generate the C-sharp, uh, generate the whole uh, PowerShell SDK. The first step, simple, uh, using the uh, YAML files, and Daniel has showed all of these steps to create the necessary uh, C-sharp library part. This is all native support uh, by Swagger. And the second part is uh, our own customized part. So basically, we uh, use the YAML files, and we have our uh, pure code gen. I will walk through of, uh, you to the this code part. Um, what this part do, uh, 
is uh, pre-process the YAML files um, and read them into a single uh, data structure that will be used to uh, render in this Jinjutsu templates. So uh, once we have uh, all of the data in the Jinjutsu template, we will generate our PowerShell scripts. And uh, we have our uh, c library uh, and PowerShell scripts, these two core um, uh, components ready, and we will wiring, wiring them up with some uh, PSD1 files, and we will have our PowerShell module ready. So, demo. First, let's uh, take a look at the C Sharp DLL. And uh, as you can see, this store uh, API.cs is the uh, C Sharp, uh, one of the uh, class of the C Sharp DLL. And we have um, one function that nearly has just demo. Uh, and this is the, also the API we are going to use in the PowerShell, um, which is place order. And you can see this um, parameter type is uh, not the basic type, it's the order uh, class. And if we see here, it uh, goes a little bit deeper. Um, there is a helper function of place order uh, with HTTP info. And uh, let's go to see the helper function to see what it does. So this helper function, um, it will create, the, uh, do the uh, core REST communication. Um, it will generate the headers, uh, generate the body parameters and serialize it. As you can serialize it and it will um, make the HTTP request, uh, and we can see the call API, and it will um, get the response from the server, uh, read the status code, and demonstrate the uh, final uh, response to the user. All of these are uh, regular REST uh, communication we need to do, but all of this uh, code will be uh, generated by uh, the Swagger, uh, will do it for you. Um, once we have the uh, C Sharp library ready, what we are going to do is, the, is in the PSD1 files, Daniel has demonstrated this part, uh, we will import this uh, DOL in the PSD1 files. So uh, in our, uh, when we generate the uh, module, we will reuse this part, still uh, importing the assemblies, and uh, we will still uh, create the C Sharp API. And the, the uh, different part is in the in our generated PowerShell scripts, uh, we will use the uh, placing pedestal as an order, and we can go to the downs to see how we uh, do things for the user. So here, still uh, using the C-sharp uh, DOL uh, store API, the, the store API .cs uh, class I have shown you, and call one of its API place order, and we use we will do this step for the user, as you can see. Um, other object is created from the new other ID and pet ID quantity and all of the parameters. And user is going to pass these parameters in this single command line. So new pedestal order, uh, we have uh, all of the parameters and user will pass in one single steps and there's um, obvious and user don't need to, oh, how do I create the new order and find, find the, uh, create all of the reference objects and then create. And uh, that's uh, basically the, our uh, outcome of generated files. So how do we generate these files? Everything starts from YAML files. Um, YAML files, we have all of the, um, the first part is like defining the metadata and um, we have the descriptions, everything about your paths. And uh, we have paths. Uh, here I will uh, I cherry pick only one uh, endpoint slash order slash order uh, uh, slash store slash uh, order. Um, you will uh, only see one uh, URL and only the one uh, function under it. So I choose the place order uh, post, which is the post function. So if there are other uh, like deleting order, uh, update order, you will see them at the same level. So make it simple. Um, to place an order of a pad, it has the summary inside of it and it has also had the operation ID, so place order, you will be uh, familiar with this uh, now because this operation ID will be used later in the code generation. Um, this is the name of the API function in the c -sharp library we are going to use in the PowerShell. And also it has the parameters, as you can see, uh, the tricky part is it used the dollar ref, so not uh, not all of the information is inside of these uh, YAML files. 
um, we need to pre-process the CMO files after we read these files because uh, this is also one of the major, st uh, major step uh, pure code, code generation does to um, dereference or resolve all of the reference in these files and do the stuff. And we can see the response, and all of these are defined in the YAML files and will be uh, returned to the user. Now let's take a look at the uh, other YAML files. And so it will be under uh, the model, models directory. So when your, um, the whole pet store get complicated, we will put everything in the model, and all of this model can be reused. Um, so we don't have a very, very lo long YAML files that having all of the information. That's the benefit of using the reference. So um, other door YAML files, pretty simple. It has a uh, description, or oh, this is the order for the pet store, and it has all of the properties. It has ID, pet ID quantity, and defines the type, loan type, and it has the description of it. And all of this information will be used later when we generate the code uh, as uh, the parameter helper and we will also uh, listing the parameters in the PowerShell using the information of the CMO files. Now, uh, let's go to uh, how we generate the PowerShell using the Python. <laughs> okay, so um, main function, obviously, that's where we are going to start. And I'm going to um, use the breakpoints to uh, stop at the Core parts to help you work through the whole procedure to understand how code works. Let's go to the debug modes. And start. So, uh, arc parser. Um, so, for uh, those who are familiar with Python, uh, this is uh, processing the arguments from the user. And here, basically, we um, read the, read the uh, YAML files and we um, put the building directory, and all of the output will be. Put there, we have some other uh, code generation, like generating some tests along with the uh, codes. And uh, once we uh, have all of the arguments processed, we will go to our main helper, generate PowerShell code. Let's go. Okay, so you will see pure swagger here. So pure swagger here is the, the one uh, I mentioned about the pure code generation. This, this step, in this step, we are going to pre-process the uh, YAML files and read them, read them into a single data structure. And this data structure is, is the uh, one we are going to use in the, uh, rendering the template. Now let's go into the pure swagger to see how we uh, pre-process the data. First step, read the YAML files. It's easy, simple, and we get the uh, spec, spec path which is uh, the pet store hyphen original dot YAML files. I just show you the first YAML files has most of the information. And we read the uh, YAML uh, files into this uh, underscore data uh, variable. So uh, obviously, um, if we just simply read the YAML files, the information will having some issues. So if we go to the paths, so remember the YAML files, we have the path, we have uh, slash store slash order, and we goes into this, goes into the post function, and we goes into the uh, parameters. We see it's um, the other uh, parameters, and goes inside of it. We can see the schema is uh, $ref slash model slash order dot yaml. That means um, we cannot use this data when rendering the Jinja2 because it's it does not have all of the information. So what we are going to do is um, continue. First helper is to resolve the reference. Basically, this uh, this function is going to do some uh, recursive. Uh, so go down and oh, uh, there is a dollar ref. I'm going to search this file and grab this information back to this data structure, and to see oh, there is another ref. I'm going to go into and grab information back to data uh, this data structure, and eventually we will have uh, one single uh, Python directory, the Python map, to have uh, all of the information of uh, all of these models and all of these uh, APIs and have the information in them. So let's uh, take a look at the data now to see how it looks like. Um, we have paths and we have slash order, sla uh, slash store, slash order. We go into the post function, we go into the parameter, go to um, the name, have this uh, order which is 
schema. Oh, sorry, I didn't. <laughs> okay, let's go again. The slash other post um, parameters. First one. And cool, we have all of the information ready under this single uh, underscore data structure. Uh, all of the uh, parameters are inside of it. So as you can see, um, good, we have all of the information, but it looks like the data structure is a little bit complicated. We don't want to handle all of this, uh, a lot of not -necessary, uh, necessary data in our Jinja 2 because parsing this um, data structure with layer, another layer, another layer is kind of cumbersome. And uh, we uh, have our own another helper uh, function to compute the parameter map. So this will have a simplified data structure having uh, most of the necessary information. So once we are done, we go to um, parameter map data structure, which is under the self variable and go to parameter map. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So you can uh, slash order, slash store, slash order and we have the post function, and we have uh, all of the parameters of this post function. Okay, simple, beauty. Um, and we are um, um, have our parameter uh, uh, ready, and we are going to go to our next uh, important process workflow, which is, oops, I think I uh, skipped it. <laughs> Store, let me start it again. Not this one, this one is parse, read the YAML files, result of reference, compute the parameter maps, and stop here. So this step is going to identify the complex parameter. So what is complex par parameter? It is the, the one, remember we knew order, uh, we create an order object first, and then we pass this order objects to our um, C Sharp API. And this is defined as complex parameter. Um, the basic parameter is simple. It's string, uh, integer, or a Boolean. We will use it directly. But with complex, we are going to identify it. And in the Jinja2 files, we, uh, we will check this marker. Oh, it's a complex. OK, we'll do, do the initialization for the user. And uh, once it's done, a user don't need to do this step. See, um, for complex, we will uh, go to the data again, we have the paths, we have the slash store, slash order, we have the parameters, Good. and for now there is no uh, marker of the uh, complex parameter, but after uh, this step, we will see there, uh, we added a new field for uh, this uh, other object, we mark it as uh, mark it as, as is complex, and this helper is fairly simple. Uh, we just go uh, do some loop and check if it's a basic one. If it's a basic one, you don't mark it. If it's a complex one, you will mark it. It's uh, simple, but do uh, real important important stuff. Um, now let's go to uh, go back. Once we have the, our all of data pre-processed, we will go back to um, the Python files. Um, we will see some uh, environment filters. And what is this filters? Filters are a definition in the Jinja 2. If you are familiar with PowerShell pipeline, I think it's very similar to it. Um, it's kind of like you are, you, you are going to define some uh, function by yourself. So like we have another uh, template helper file, uh, get class name, and you can use these uh, functions inside of um, the Jinja2. So wh what it looks like is in Jinja2, every variable will be uh, covered by the uh, curly braces. Um, and you have the a list, and you will have this um, the filters, and going to uh, separate this list uh, with comma. And once we have all of these uh, helper functions defined, uh, we will go to the next step. And this step is intuitive. We get a, a template from, uh, this is the template we are going to use, PowerShell module.ps1.jinja2. Um, and we are going to get the template object. And uh, once we have the template object, 
we will go to a loop. So this model um, model is the one we um, read from the pure swagger dot parse. So this one is similar to uh, the underscore data I have shown you. So if we take a look at this um, variable, we have the paths and we have all of the uh, slash store, slash uh, order, and all of the information in it. So it will work through all of the paths in under the models. So in, in our case, we just have only one path because I simpl simplify the, uh, the YAML files. We have the slash store slash order, but uh, in the real case, you will have a lot of paths and they will work through one by one. So for this single path, we are going to get a, a slash store slash order uh, we, and we um, do some string manipulation and get some suffix and we will use the suffix to define the uh, the PowerShell scripts, the name of the PowerShell scripts we are going to generate. And we also um, get some uh, data, data uh, to cherry pick some data inside of this uh, paths, which use the model path, the uh, slash, store, uh, slash store slash order to cherry pick the information of this single path. Okay, now with all of the information ready, we are going to render our uh, PowerShell. We are going to render uh, with the Jinja2 templates. Go to the next. So we can have, uh, we can take a look at the uh, data we have. One is the comp uh, the complicated one, having all of the information. Uh, the paths under, you can see there's a uh, step, step, and another step, having all of the information. Uh, we call it a model. We call it as a model, and this model will be later uh, be a variable in the Jinja2. And in the Jinja2 template, you can get access to all of the information in this model. And also have the parameter map. And this is the one uh, I mentioned to you. Uh, that is the simplified uh, version of the model having all of the information of the parameters. So, uh, and we just do it. And yes, we writing the um, the PS final PS results to the pad store hyphen order dot PS one, and we will have uh, the files ready. Let's take a look at how it looks like. So I have, as I have shown you, this is uh, the function, function name, parameters, and the uh, core part of initialization, the reference, the complex type, and then uh, call the C sharp API to present the output to the user. Okay, so Jinja two files. For um, better understanding, I will get you another column so that we can compare the Jinja2 with the files we have uh, with the .ps1 files. Sorry? Oh, okay. Good suggestion. <laughs> um, okay, so Jinja2 files, how does it work? Um, we have, uh, so every variable or um, like for loops or if blocks, it will be covered by this uh, curly uh, braces. And for anything that is not covered by the uh, this curly braces, we are going to print it as it is. So as you can see, um, from the beginning of the file, uh, generated from PowerShell module.cs.jinja2, we will have the same thing in our uh, PowerShell scripts, right? Um, and here comes the uh, interesting part. Macro, what is macro? It's um, the function, the uh, Jinja2 version of function. Um, you have the function name and you put the parameters, you define it in the Jinja2, and it will help you to render uh, the views for you. So let's see, uh, this macro, what it does is to uh, generate the parameter description. It's the, the function name is called parameter comments and it inputs this parameter. So we have dot parameter and this is the uh, map and we uh, get access to the key name. And uh, as you can see, dot parameter ID, dot parameter pad ID, and we will um, print it to the user. And the next uh, uh, macro is generate partial parameter. So previous one is generate the comments, and this one is going to generate the par uh, partial parameter. 
um, and it's still for a single block for every parameter. parameter. So it will check, uh, set the variable, it's defining a variable in Jinda2. Is, is this uh, parameter ma mandatory or not? So we can um, see, it's uh, check, check, we have a check here, check if it's required, and we um, print the original name of this parameter, and we get the parameter attributes from the YAML files, and we get the parameter type, and we get the parameter name. And for this single block, we have uh, four lines as well. We have some comments here. We put the parameter attributes, we have the parameter type, and we have the parameter name. And next uh, macro is uh, the complex uh, parameter initialization. So in the Jinja2 file, uh, we have, um, we will check if it is a complex par parameter. If it is a complex one, we are going to initialize for the user. So we have the new hyphen, so it will always be new hyphen some objects. So in this case, it will be new hyphen order. Um, it will be uh, creating the parameter mapped type. This is also um, the uh, parameter, uh, the information we have because we need to map these uh, parameters to type order because uh, all of these param parameters are from the other uh, objects. And we will do a for loop, loop through all of the parameters uh, in this uh, in this para all all of the parameters and uh, do them one by one, or generate the ID and getting ID and pet ID and getting pet ID and and generate this line of the creating the complex parameter. And the next one is the big one. So this is like a main function, and all of the macro I uh, mentioned above, it's like a helper help help fun helper function helper macro. And this uh, main uh, command line is going to uh, do a generation from start to end. So before we look into this main function at end here, we uh, check we check the uh, entry point of this Jinja2 files. So model, remember, this is the uh, beginning, the very beginning uh, data structure we send to this Jinja2 files. So uh, we uh, get the paths, items, and we check if, if it's a get method, it's if it's a post method, it's a patch or not, we will uh, invoke this Jinja2 macro, the command line macro, with all of the informations, and it will start to rendering the contents in this uh, main command line, command line, uh, command line macro. So here, uh, let's starting from how it looks like. So it has uh, paths, getting the path as comments, and it defines the function, uh, which also has the verb we defined, uh, we send from the parameter, and goes to path store object name, and then we will start to rendering the function description. We have a synopsis from the summary, this is from the YAML files, and description also from the YAML files, and we will loop through all of the parameters and call the helper macro, the param comments, uh, I have demo just now, and it will do a for loop and generate the comments for uh, all of the param parameter one by one. And once uh, this part is done, we will go to our next uh, uh, part of listing function parameters. So um, we will have our parameter uh, and we loop through all of the parameter and call the helper macro partial parameter. Um, and we'll go through the parameter one by one and generate it's the same. And interesting part is uh, one of the feature I like, oops, one of the feature, feature I like in the Jinja2 files, it can check if, <laughs> if it can check it's the last loop or not. If it's the last one, we will not print the comma, but if it's not, we will print the comma here. It's very easy to use. Otherwise, we will have a annoying comma here. <laughs> okay, and go to the process. Okay, go to the process and uh, we will have the reference type generated here. Um, we see here, we check if it is complex type in the map mentioned just now. And if it's a complex, a complex type, we will call the macro to uh, invoke the complex parameter initialization and do this line, generate this line. And a last step is to invoke C-sharp APIs 
and we will see the operation ID I just mentioned in the YAML files, which is the uh, direction you will use uh, to find the uh, uh, C-sharp API function name you will to use. And that's basically all we have in the Gina 2. And uh, let's take a look at how the final results looks like. Clear the session. So I'm going to uh, Im uh, just loading the partial scripts we have down. And let's see a new pet store with no um, reference object and with brandly, a uh, brandly new name. And we will get the output from there. Um, and uh, let's see how helps looks like now. And we have all of the information from synopsis, placing order, description, and all of the parameters, and ID, pad ID, and description of this parameter, and all of the useful information in single one command. And thank you. That's the demo today. Yeah, so just a quick, quick recap. Uh, basically, you go, uh, your four steps are to generate the C-sharp lib, uh, you translate the YAML files, uh, render your Jinja template, and then you can support your module. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Question? Because I don't know if they were not more play on the interface. I mean, is it only going to be It depends on the size of the YAML file, but to generate this single one, we takes about um, one second. It's very fast because it's processing the Python and it's just a read into the data structure. And but once it gets bigger, it will take some time. But still, that not not very long because it's just processing in memory, local in your computer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's all we have. Uh, I think we're a little bit over time, so I want to be respectful of people's time. Uh, but we're going to be outside uh, on the booth, or you can have our contact info. So if you have questions, just reach out. Um, and yeah, thank you for coming. <laughs>